Hello fellow Minecraft fans, and welcome back to another episode of Mythicraft with me, Mythology5, and today I am going to be explaining how to design anything in Minecraft. We're going to make this as brief as possible so that you can get a bunch of information without wasting a bunch of time. Enjoy the video, and make sure to stay till the end where I discuss something about the entire process that is very important to keep in mind. So the way I've set this up is there are six different levels of the design process that I've put here, and then one bonus level thing at the end, and it's like a step-by-step -step process. So the first step is to identify one or more of the following, and these are either an improvable design, a problem, or a goal, or more than one of these you can use these to decide what you're actually going to be doing or determine if you need to be doing anything in the first place. So, for example, with this, when I originally made my first Ender Pearl stasis chamber, it was just an improved design of one that I'd already seen on YouTube that I knew that I could make better. And it's just that kind of thing that you go. Or looking for diamonds, or just wanting to solve some kind of problem. The second step is to identify criteria and constraints, such as dimensions build palette, and setting. These are all very important because they're limiting factors to what you're going to be doing, or they just help make stuff better. And they can help you make sure that your design is exactly what you're looking for. And so, obviously with dimensions, you need to make sure it fits where you want it to fit. Build palette, make sure it looks good in the setting you want it to. And then setting, make sure it fits into the setting. So, kinda similar there, because these two have to work together for it to look good. The third step is to research applicable material, such as relevant game mechanics, such as mob spawning behavior, designs, components that could help, which includes like different parts of redstone contraptions, larger ones, and techniques, in this case a uh, very basic building technique on how to build a wall that could work in certain situations. To do this step, all you have to do is just go on YouTube or the Minecraft wiki and find the information you need for your build and that is pretty much it. The fourth step is to start making rough designs in a creative world. So here we have three different designs that all do the exact same thing. They all turn on a light with one button and turn off the light with a different button. And so all three of these do the same exact thing, but they're just different designs. So you don't have to worry about pretty much anything at this step, just get it to work, essentially. The fifth step is to take a few of the best designs and make them simpler, more compact. Theoretically, this is more compact, but it doesn't really do anything either, and more effective. The final step, the sixth step, is to determine which design you will use and ask, is it as simple as it can be? Is it as compact as it can be? And is it as effective as it can be? So basically, the key to this step is just test everything to make sure it is as good as it possibly can be. Test it a lot. And you can use these letters that stand for simple, compact, and effective, and just combine them in whatever order you want to make any kind of acronym or anything, if you would like to remember it. And here are some bonus tips. First of all, if your design is not possible, you won't find out until step four, which is rather unfortunate. Step four is the part of the process where you actually start creating designs. So that's back there with those three redstone designs that are the same exact thing or do the same exact thing. So that's step four, and you won't find out until then if your design isn't gonna work. For example, my uh, rather unfortunate one block wide TNT duper that is tileable that I tried to make for a very long time is not possible, as far as I'm aware. Second, take cost of blocks into account. If you're gonna be transferring this into survival, you need to make sure to limit the use of things like lodestones, and beacons because they're expensive, like very expensive. And unless you're on Hermitcraft or Psycraft or one of those places, you're, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of those. And even things like hoppers and anvils, you don't wanna use a whole ton of those unless you have a really good iron farm. And finally, know your attention span. You need to make sure that when you design something, you are confident that you will be able to actually transfer it into survival effectively, or just even if it's in creative, that you'll be able to finish it. Because you might make something like this, which just pretend it's a million times larger, and you want to make it in survival, 
you might end up just getting something like this. This is exactly what happened with Vuorator in Season 1 of Mythicraft, where I had this awesome design for this really, really, really big castle that I was going to make, and I just completely lost motivation to do it. So you need to make sure you know how motivated you are and your attention span, or else you're just going to end up with a partially completed thing that doesn't look as good. And now, let's move on to some specific examples from my past that can hopefully help you in some ways. A perfect example of this process is when I made the Enderpearl Cannons from one of the other Mythicraft episodes. I used an iterative process with the six steps here to design a bunch of different versions of them, test them all out, choose the best ones, improve them, and inevitably test them out further to make sure they were consistent and reliable, and then use them in the video to demonstrate the newer designs because I had finalized them through the process. And as we saw, this process worked very well because the designs are all very effective and reliable, so I see this as an absolute win. Now let's move on to another one. A super helpful thing to do with redstone designs is to create the entire system, make a bunch of variants of it like I did with this one. This is the design for my uh, netherite shop in season 2 and then just deconstruct it into each of the components. Using colored wool to separate the different components is really really helpful to keep track of everything that's going on and often building ones like this where you just take apart them even though this is a pretty simple one you can still see that it's way easier to just construct these in the correct place than to just look at this and construct the entire thing as it is there. It'll make a lot more sense to you also. With this build, it is slightly different than the previous two, because I didn't actually go step by step with the process that I've discussed in this video. Rather, I just came up with what I wanted to do, some criteria, and went with it. I didn't go by any specific steps, though if we do look at my process, it did roughly follow the same that I have discussed here. And so, this is just, I'm trying to make a point here that you don't necessarily need to follow it step by step. As long as you get the general gist of all of it, and make sure to not really skip any steps by the end of your process, you are pretty much good to go. So essentially, the purpose of this video was not to say, this is how you make something in Minecraft. The purpose was basically to line up how you could make something in Minecraft, and general tips on how to do so. You don't have to follow the process that I've laid out here exactly, and in fact, it's probably better not to. Go with how you feel like it works best for you because everyone is different when it comes to designing stuff. This process is my way of doing it, and how I typically go with, but it's not always the same. So just make sure that you always keep track of what you're doing, and make sure that you don't forget any crucial steps, because then stuff can go wrong. But, other than that, do what you like. This process is just a base model that you can go off of, or completely ignore if you find that you have a different one. Please let me know. If this video has been helpful, in the comments down below, and leave a like if you enjoyed, maybe check out some of my other videos, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!